Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, uh, a warm welcome also from Germany. Um, um, welcome to this talk um, called or titled Optimized Publishing of Map and Data Services with GeoServer, GeoStyler, GeoWebCache and MapProxy, quite a mouthful. Uh, GeoServer, you already had the introduction talk in case you were in this session beforehand. Um, Jody has told uh, us already a lot of it. And um, also GeoStyler got a shout out. Um, I'll now try to explain what the others mean and how to get optimized publishing done with them. So um, which is the road that we are going to take for this talk? Uh, we'll start with some very small slides uh, about uh, both the author and the presenter because those are not the same people. Um, about this talk in general, about what to expect. Uh, then all the components that you have uh, seen in the title will be shortly explained. And then we'll talk about the optimization uh, with two focuses or um, two points that we are going to look at in detail. One is style, the other one is performance. And then uh, I'll stop this with um, a summary and um, probably give out a show an example of how this can work all together. So about the author and the presenter. So the author of this talk is Till Adams, who is very sad that he cannot come um, to this presentation to give it himself, but his son has just graduated and he's uh, partying hard with his uh, son now in school due to the circumstances, uh, this dates have uh, shifted quite a lot. Um, Till already gave a talk this morning um, about Actinia and GRASGIS. He's the founder of Terrestris and Mundialis, two German companies, one focused on GIS, basically with open source tools and the other one on earth observation, if you want to put it in one sentence. He is also probably known to some of you because he was the chair of the Global Phosphor G 2016, which was in Bonn. And he's an OSGO board member. And right now he's earning his money as a consultant and agile coach in those monies. As I said, he's the founder of those two companies together with uh, some others. Um, and I am one of the two um, people that actually run those companies. I'm the general manager of, well, I'm Mark, I forgot to say that. Um, I'm the, both the general manager of Terrestris and Mundialis. One is basically two and a half years and the other one uh, roughly one year. I'm an OSGO charter member since 2013 and also core developer and member of the project steering committee of Open Layers, a JavaScript library you may have heard about and GeoEXT, another one that you probably have heard about. I also contributed to GeoStyler, React Geo and some other Phosphor G things. So I look at stuff usually from a technical or developer perspective while till sometimes well he used to be a developer himself but that's ages ago um he sometimes has a different viewpoint on things so um i think it together we're we're a good oh yeah team as you can see in the upper right corner that was when we left off for phosphor g south korea um when I'm not uh, running one of those two companies, I uh, speak and teach about Phosphor-G. And this is also uh, what I'm going to do right now. And in the middle, you can see me when I was at one workshop in Mongolia. So the company that uh, sends, well, not actually sends us, uh, well, that has given us the time to work on, on these topics and to also, um, yeah, to make us present this this um, talk is terrestrials we're doing open source jazz we're located in bonn and germany uh, since we were founded in 2002 we're nearly grown up 18 years old um, we're doing everything around development projects but also run custom um, uh, training sessions and stuff like that we're an OSGO Silver Level sponsor, and we're actually also running a quite popular free open street map WMS, which you can see on the top right corner. Um, this is a very small uh, excerpt from it, and this uses all the components that we are going to talk about right now. Uh, it's just one example. I can, this is the Cologne Cathedral in the center, some railroad tracks and the River Rhine in the east. So there's a bunch of people in this company and they all work hard to give you uh, great open source software with a geo 
touch. So about this talk, um, this talk is, uh, well, it, first off it was created by Till, so the slides are uh, his and I will do my best to show you them and to explain everything that's on them. Um, this talk is intended basically for users, not so much for developers. Um, thank God, and you have learned, learned about that um, well, 20 minutes ago, basically when Jody showed how to create EG a WMS. Um, and the creation of a WMS with uh, open source tools is very easy today. And uh, I thank God every day for that. But styling a WMS or cartographic data uh, in general is uh, always a question and it's still a topic. As we have also seen on the questions that were given to Jody, I think roughly 30% of them were around styling, YSLD and stuff like that. And uh, the other thing that still comes up is performance because you know data, especially geodata, comes in uh, huge amounts and uh, to put them in uh, on a map which is good looking um, and also in a quite quick time is still a topic. So basically what made us submit this talk was uh, many customers for the last 18 years have asked us the same questions over and over again and in the last month uh, coincidentally, uh, we have received more, even more than, than usually. And um, so this is why we want to show how we re use it, do it. So what I will be presenting is not the only solution how to do stuff. Uh, open source gives you the freedom to pick uh, and mix up components just as you want to do it. And um, there's yeah, many ways leading you to Rome. And this one, this talk wants to show one way and we want to yeah, give back a bit of our experience and show you how we sometimes approach and solve problems. Okay, now let's have a look at the title of this talk. So optimized publishing of map and data services with GeoServer, GeoStyler, GeoWebCache and MapProxy. Um, I'm pretty sure not all of you knows well, knows all of those four components. I will not go into too much detail when it comes to GeoServer, but the other ones I will be presenting with a bit more detail. So GeoServer, you have heard a lot about it. The thing to remember is this one is a super cool uh, open source product to surf geodata on the web. So you can use it to surf basically any data that you have or own or have access to and put it in, um, in a way into the web that is, well, very nice consumable by many clients. Um, it is very widely used and it's an awesome piece of software. Uh, you should really use it or try it out. So there's the homepage, um, geoserver.org, and also, of course, the organization that hosts everything. It's uh, geoserver. Well, sorry, it, it's, it's all, the source code is all on GitHub. It's an OS Geo product, um, project and you should definitely use it. So what does it do in a nutshell? It takes your data that's on the left side, vector, raster, some databases, or even other WMS or WFS servers, and um, puts out those data that you give it in different other formats like WMS, WFS, web coverage service, and so on and so forth. It's really a, a Swiss army knife when it comes to serving data on the web. So basically, as I said, publishing data um, in the web isn't that hard anymore in 2020. So one could think that he's done now. I have installed GeoServer and then I'm done. But then the questions arise. No, we're not done. Now it's coming up to styling maps. So GeoServer, we have had that uh, topic in the previous talk. GeoServer has um, improved a lot in styling. Um, geodata <clears throat> and will continue to do so. I'm very, I'm very uh, sure. There are different options. It usually one uses SLD, but there's a couple of other um, options that you can use, for example, YSLD or CSS. We've had all that, but um, I think the lingua franca, and I may be corrected by others, um, of GeoServer, at least internally, is still a, um, SLD style layer descriptor, which is basically XML. And if you use XML or SLD to, um, to style your, your data, uh, it very 
quickly becomes quite messy and it's hard to find your way around it. There is GeoServer uh, user interfaces that help you create it and these also improve with every release. I also thank God for that. Um, but there's probably something else that you can try out. And this is a new uh, OS Geo community project, which is called GeoStyler. It's basically a ready to use map styling library. It basically has two things that you, it wants to address. The first one it, uh, is it wants to provide components that you can use and reuse in your own web applications to uh, solve the ever occurring question of how do I want to have my points look like, my polygons look like. And the other thing it wants to be like a, um, a carousel of data formats or styling formats. So you can give it an SLD and it spits out um, Mapbox styles, for example, or open layers ones. Those are j basically JavaScript objects. Um, as I already said, it reads a lot of and writes a lot of style formats, but also some data formats, because when it comes to styling, it's not, well, most of the, well, some of the thematic styling options that one has are um, to, for example, use some attribute of your data to give different colors for shapes. And in order to do, to do that or to assist the user to do that, um, it's needed to read different data types or data formats. So right now we can read WFS, GeoJSON or shapefiles. In the works are uh, read support for GeoPackage. Um, and then you can create your styles with it. And uh, there we support right now SLD, the QGS styles, Mapbox and also open layers. And in the works um, by a company that is um, a friend of us, uh, camp to camp are the development of the map server styles. So this is basically how it looks with GeoStyler. Uh, this is what it does. It has support for different filters. Uh, I want to have those features with some attributes styled this way and others some other way. Uh, scale ranges, it can calculate overlaps between classes that you give it. And it is a standalone UI, but also provides just a as a yeah, translator between different formats. This is how it can look like. This is only one example, uh, how to change the symbolizer of a point. I think it is in this case on the left-hand side, we support well-known symbols uh, on the lower middle uh, part. Uh, there's the filter editor. So we support filter encoding also part of SLD. So we can indefinitely and super complex filters. Um, and on the right hand side, there's the code editor where you can still edit SLD by hand if you want to. This is the standalone de um, demo where the federal states of Germany have been uh, automatically styled, have been automatically styled by their attribute population. It just connects to a WFS and then you say, I want to have four classes with this scale range and then it spits out this preview map, map and I can uh, take away that SLD and give it to GeoServer back and then I'll have it there. Fine thing. So in order to make this integration with GeoServer better or easier, there's also a GeoServer extension. We already had that topic, so you can extend GeoServer. And there's one that basically gives you another tab um, when it comes to publishing your data. And this one includes the GeoStyler inside of the GeoServer. So now we have a nice looking map. So we're done, right? No, of course we're not, I said it. Um, it's not only about good looking maps, they also need to be uh, quick uh, or fast. And uh, so one common approach to get your map very fast is to actually use tiles when you put them out. So WMS is basically not limited in what extent you can ask it for, um, for to, pr to produce a map for you. And um, so it's it's hard to determine for the server which will be the next one so if you go by well if you uh, do it with uh, with tiles the story is a different one this basically assumes that um, i can put the complete world into one tile um, this is the level zero up here in some specific um, projection and then once i zoom in i spit i i split this one tile into four detail four more detailed tiles and these de these tiles are all uh, well deterministic so i know all the bounds that are there and if your data doesn't change too often this one really really helps because um you basically just have to find out the right tiles and deliver them to the client and then everything is fine 
So there's a lot of reason to think about caching your um, your maps if you are doing web mapping. So there's basically two solutions to, well, there's more than two solutions, of course. Uh, two solutions in the title of this presentation. There's one is Geo Web Cache, and it has a really, really um, great advantage over any other um, other uh, tiling um, software. That is, it is integrated into GeoServer. So if you have a standalone GeoServer running somewhere, you get Geo Web Cache for free. And it has some user interfaces um, mixed into the other user, user interfaces. So it makes it quite easy to you know get started with caching. Um, there's the URLs where you can find it and it helps you put your data into tiles and to serve them quicker. This is how it does it. You can connect WMS servers to GeoWebCache. Um, so on the right hand side, you can put in basically any WMS server you want to, and then you can make many clients happy on the left hand side with faster maps. About five minutes and or so, Mark. Sorry? About five minutes or so. Yeah, fine. Uh, only seven more slides, so. <laughs> uh, so the another one is Map Proxy. Uh, it's a different software. Um, it basically does the same thing. It has a bit more uh, input formats that it supports and uh, also it feels, for my, it's a personal opinion, it feels a bit um, easier to work with. It has a very nice user interface on the command line and stuff like that. It's easy to configure and it reads um, some more in inputs and it provides the same output. So you can give it basically, again, a lot of WMS or tile servers and it will uh, create a cache if you want to and then you can make many clients very happy with it. So some cool functions of map proxy. So it can, for example, put uh, grayscale versions without further ado. Um, you can apply functions to the data and then you can have a doubled version of your uh, basement, for example, one in grayscale, one in colors. It can also reproject tiles on the fly um, and it can then use one cache for several uh, projection systems. Uh, it, it can also interpolate tiles between cache zoom levels and it has a quite optimized storage and also can be plugged into a single sign-on solution so that you can also secure data. A part of these um, functions will also be done by a GeoWeb cache. Um, but, um, well, it's not all about, you know, hard functions. It's also about how you like to use some software. Um, so if we compare those two, GeoWeb cache is built in, as I said, and the entry barrier is basically non-existent. So if you have a geo server to try it out, you can also try out GeoWeb cache. But if you do so, please try also this other software map proxy because it has some hard facts that are easier, well, that are, you know, a bit better than the, the other solution. Um, but also it, you know, it feels a little bit, a little bit different. It's also quite uh, performant and so on and so forth. So this is how a usual architecture can look like. So that we have geo files in a geo database, for example. Then we have the geo server that does all the hard work and the geo styler helps it to make maps that look good. Um, then we have either map proxy or geo web cache in front of it. And this helps us to produce fast maps. This is how we do it. And basically now we're done. So we can have a look at a quick example, how this can actually look like. Let me just switch my uh, content. So here's the geo style I have uh, talked about earlier. And now let me find the right tab. Of course, it's covered. So there's a web page that um, if my internet is not slow enough, um, shows one WMS. Um, as I said, it's super fast. You can see it. And uh, this is one um, cartographic uh, way or a nicely styled base map that we have, it uses OSM data, and this um, uses all the stuff that we have been talking about earlier. So pre-generated caches, uh, it's free to use. There's a URL in, on my slides and um, yeah, just pick it. There's also other ones. So let's switch back to the presentation. I'm nearly done with it. So this is the summary. So the takeaway message. Um, Open source software is combi combinable and you should do it. You should play around with it. There's no vendor login or something. Try and mix up your components like you want to do them. 
and then pick them uh, with your best, also with a bit of gut feeling uh, as we did it. And uh, this architecture that we have here um, is very suitable to provide both good looking and fast maps. Uh, also the service is very robust. There's also, uh, there's not only the free one, there's also a paid version of this. Um, those are some key points to take away. And one other thing to take away, which I always include on my slides, is um, we're talking about open source software here, and there's a way of you to contribute. So either by now asking me 11 questions or discuss with me about how to improve any of the softwares that we have just talked about, or by giving us back code or, or something else. So there's a, a picture here of some guy, uh, I think it's called, he's called Initial BMG. Um, and he has just um, six hours ago, he gave us the, the Chinese translation of the GeoStyler. So I'm pretty sure there's something in the open source world that you can help us with. So please give a little, back, little bit back and uh, thank you very much for listening to me. And I hope you have some questions. If not, I can always continue showing demos. We've definitely got questions, Mark. Thanks very much. As as usual, they're, they're all rushing in at the end. I can barely keep up now, but uh, so I'm just going to crack straight on with those. First one is from somebody called Jody. I don't know who he is, but um, some of you may recognize him. He says, first of all, he says a note, standalone GWC, Geo Web Cache, presumably can be used like Map, map Proxy, he says. Um, yes. And that's just a note. So second question, it says, ask about using GeoStyler to publish map box style stroke map box vector tile combo. I don't know if he's trying to put you on the spot there or, or what. Okay. So yeah, as I said it earlier, there's different ways or different formats that GeoStyler is able to produce. And where is it? Where's that slide? There it is. So one of the styles that is the de facto industry standard, or at least in recent terms has become industry standard is Mapbox style. And so you can, for example, you can put in an SLD and GeoStyler can produce a Mapbox uh, style file for you from, from it. And then you can take this style to, in future versions, um, put it into GeoServer directly because GeoServer can uh, then, or I think the, the most recent ones can already read uh, Mapbox styles. And um, you can also create um, JavaScript applications that take the raw data basically uh, with Mapbox ve vector tiles, and um, which is another format of getting out tiles, but this time it's not the, the colored map already, but only the tiled way of the, your data. And then you can style it, which is in, well, it gives you all the profits of vector data um, in that it has, it's, it's just rendered on the client. So it has sharp edges, like just like you want it. It's also super fast and very responsive. You can interact with it when your mouse hovers over something or, or, or the likes. Um, yeah, and then you can also create, if you want to, uh, with those Mapbox styles or other styles, um, yeah, raster maps. Like, uh, that have their different set of pros and cons, of course. Thank you for the question, Jody. Cool, okay, I'm gonna crack on. So Richard says, uh, I think I see styling is done prior to caching the tiles rather than caching on the front end of cached vector tiles. What's the advantage reasoning behind this? Well, it depends on, well, as always in reality, it, it, it of course depends. So the way that I have shown it, there is quite some styling involved in producing a base map as I have shown it. Um, so the SLD and any other format of this is very long. So in that case, when you produce a base map where the data doesn't change too drastically over time, it's one super common way of creating the styles uh, server side and having them server side produce raster maps and then give them out. But also it's not uncommon at all to go the way that was also hinted at with the previous question to produce map box vector, vector tiles, for example, and then use all the caching options on the client side. So before I go too deep into, uh, into detail, the web is made for caching, of course. There's ways of, uh, I can, a website can tell you how long it shall cache an HTML or a PNG file or some data that has been transferred. 
and of course this is one super way of get, yeah, creating fast things in the end it's all about um, the concrete question you have to uh, answer so um, both can work for your question okay uh, the next one uh, from Mr. Ollie, who says, can users in a styled web map select different styles dependent on their use case, i.e. dark mode, colorblind mode, etc.? So well, there's different ways. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it comes, well, I'm not sure about which component he's asking me. So, of course, WMS um, have the, some property that's called style. Uh, where you can select in the URL basically the type of style you want to apply to um, some WMS request. That's one option. So you have to create two different types of SLBs, for example, one for dark and one for um, for um, for the other mode. Uh, so that's one thing. And also the same goes for, or well, not the same, um, for example, the GeoStyler interface that I've shown here, those components here, they depend on some framework and there's different themes for them um, that can be applied. So this one probably uses the default theme, but there's of course a lot of other themes available in the web. I'm not sure if I got the right, well, the right component. If not, just ask Anthony again. I will then pick it up later. Okay, thanks. Uh, so David says, um, I have many raster files in ECW format, but I have found GeoServer yes. failed to recognize them any advice on dealing with G ECW? Hmm. Uh, so I'm pretty sure EC ECW, um, those are raster files, I'm pretty sure. And yeah. um, I think there's some data preparation needed then that you can apply, of course, to make them more, more more easily readable or consumable by EG GeoServer, but probably uh, the Jody or someone else from the next talk can also pick this up. Um, there's this tool called o OGR or Ogre. I think it's pronounced Ogre. Um, and um, this, his companion friend, um, well, Ogre can be used to transform basically from any format to any other format. So one option that I would try first is to transform, if possible, those ECW files into some other format. Um, double check whether the content is correct and then uh, give it to GeoServer to, to spit it out. But there's also, I think, I faintly remember, uh, there's also an ECW plugin probably. So maybe something someone else can, with more detailed GeoServer knowledge, can answer in the follow up. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, sorry, where are we? Uh, yeah, so what's the optimal storage for a map? cache that's from James I'm not quite sure what the context of that is but uh, um. well the optimal map storage well good question um, when it comes to I think it's is he talking about I suppose now that he's talking about storing files on the on server the, side like, he says server side. Server, server side he says um, yeah, the best one is one way you don't have to think about it. And both of them have applied some ways of having uh, their Z index, basically those, if you remember this pyramid I showed, I think this one, so level zero, level one or level two, and all the way down to level whatever, 23. Um, they are the first level. And then you can assign to all those um, squares in the picture here on the right, you can um, assign um, yeah, numbers basically. And then you have a bunch of top level folders basically and inside those folders, subfolders. And this usually helps to uh, have it very efficiently uh, being fetched and also being uh, written on the, on the disk. I really hope this answers your question. If not, just drop me a line. I have had uh, my, my email included in the slides. Okay, uh, Paul says, uh, which plays best in a cluster? Geo web cache or map proxy? Well, that's an awesome question. So the clouds. Um, I don't feel uh, trained enough to give a definite answer on this. I think they can both work well. Uh, we have a setup well, for that uh, for this service that we have shown earlier. Um, there's a, this is a cloudless server um, running there. It's just some super strong servers uh, being set together. So um, 
we have some experience and not the best ones with the cloud and uh, serving map stuff over there. But when it comes to tiles, if you only just spit out tiles, then the, the cloud is of course very well suited uh, to produce basically just PNG files, put them on uh, some, some server like uh, some Amazon server and just have them uh, give them back. So I think both of them, both of the solutions that I showed uh, can be used easily to do that. But when it comes to then if, if there's something not cached or something and it has to come down to GeoServer or some other map serving um, software, then um, the cloud poses its own questions that need to be addressed. That's all I can say for now. So I think both of them are very well suited, those caching things. And um, we've, well, we've abandoned using them for our solutions because it was easier to manage two owned or three owned servers than uh, some cloud for us. Your mileage may vary. Okay, so there's one, uh, James has just uh, written me uh, a question probably where he says the, the storage type. He was asking about whether it's better to store in the file system or in the database. Um, I, I personally prefer database whenever I can. Um, but um, when it comes to tiles, file system is uh, unbeatable fast as far as I say, can say. Um, when it comes to the raw input data, um, also your data depends on which is faster. Um, years ago, nobody would have thought of putting raster data into PostGIS, um, but then some people came and just did it and it's performing quite well. So no definite answer as again here, sorry, but you can okay. at least try it out. So just a couple of uh, quick fire questions for you, Mark, and then I think we better wrap up. And Andrea helpfully said that um, he and Jody can can pick up some of the questions later if if you're if they're still outstanding because uh, it's covering some of the same ground. So firstly, um, somebody Shailesh says, when is the new Geo EXD new version coming? The one, well, I cannot say anything to GeoXT doesn't get too much love. I, we have some customers um, not within the next two months. Okay. Uh, he wants one. To, be, to be quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, second one from Ian. Uh, what language is GeoStyler written in? Uh, in TypeScript, basically, which compiles to uh, JavaScript. And there's, of course, some bunch of CSS. You will love it. Try it out. <laughs> 